Go ahead. Yeah, so some of the red flags, and typically what will happen is if someone is coming out of a toxic relationship, then they'll, it's hindsight, right? They'll be like, they're out, they have some time to like reflect and think back. And when they're thinking back, I always say, okay, when you started seeing this person, what was your gut telling you? Because a lot of this is about our intuition and okay. usually the red flags, usually our bodies tell us if there are red flags. So like, for me, it would be like, um, kind of like, I'm not, you can't see, but like solar plexus, like right here. I kind of start so, getting this like icky, queasy feeling. So just, let me make sure I so just below the breastplate, you're saying kind of in the lower rib cage, just above the navel, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. It'd be different for like. So maybe someone's like throat might get a little tight or something, but okay. that's a good, our physical bodies tell us when there's like danger, even if it's okay. like psychological and emotional danger, um, it will tell us. So I often tell women that, rem do you, like I ask them, do you remember at the beginning if you felt like, and I just use the word icky because I feel like people, that's just kind of like a, a word, people. Mm -hmm. I don't like to get into like clinical definitions that kind of like loses people. But yeah, if you're like feeling it, like if it's not a pleasant feeling when they're like, when they say something to you and it doesn't quite settle right, that right. Is a, that's a big red flag. And you have to like listen to your intuition that's really important some of the other ones um that are maybe a, a little more obvious are like if you're starting to like date someone or like if you know the women that i work with they look back and they're like oh yeah like within i don't know two three weeks this guy was saying like i love you or like he was like wanting me to go to like, I don't know, Italy to his friend's wedding with him. And just like very kind of like extravagant things or like what the, cause I've been in, in two toxic relationships and one of them like gave me this like Swarovski or how do you, I have that the fancy crystals, whatever. A really? And like a designer watch within like, I don't know, probably like a month of us going out. It wasn't my birthday. It wasn't Christmas. <laughs> like, that's not normal. That's okay, now, now, come on now. If you got it like that, you got it like that. If you just kind of got it like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just asking, so, he just met you and within, let's definitely say within 35 days, he felt the need to put extravagant gifts on you. Uh, so that's a red flag, would you not? I mean, we could probably agree on that. That's kind of a red flag, right? Yeah. That's, that's not necessarily a good sign because he's trying a little too hard too soon. Yeah. And this, okay. the beginning stages, the technical term is called love bombing. And they're pretty okay. much doing like, they're getting to know you. They're getting to know like what, like where your needs aren't being met and they okay. make sure and fill those needs. So they start that, like it's called a trauma bond. So they okay. start that trauma bond and what a trauma bond is, is, and this is my own definition again, not anything like clinical. No, no, oh, go ahead. Definitely. Well, well, let me, hey, let me, let me help you with that. You don't have to give no more disclaimers because this, this whole page is for millennials. Okay. This is whoever comes on here and there's a long list of people that are going to be coming on here and you're, listen, just do you. Yeah. We're, we're, we're talking to millennials here and we're not trying to be therapists and nothing like, we're just putting it on street terminology and let's just do us. Go ahead. You're doing great. Awesome. Go ahead. I love it. I love it. I love so, it. Trauma bond is when there is intense, emotionally intense highs and lows that creates a chemical addiction to that person. So in the beginning of a toxic relationship, 
what they'll do is they'll love bomb and they'll do all these things. They'll be everything and anything that you've ever dreamed of. And they'll get that information from you and use it. They'll right. Yes. They'll take you to amazing places. They'll just like, they'll be like your like perfect person. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And I swear there's like a textbook for like toxic people. <laughs> they all do. The same, they all do the same thing. Yes. Yeah. Like I swear almost every single woman I've spoken to the begin. It's this, um, it's this pattern. It's a love bombing phase evaluation. Okay which is like when they um, start to like belittle you um, and it could even like, at first you're like, oh, I, I guess they're just like, they they just like to tease a lot or whatever. Like, like right, right, right. oh, you're, you're like, you're this way. And it's like, yeah. and then you get this feeling like you're, because what they're trying to do is they're trying to lower your self-confidence so that they can control you. Because if you don't have any self-confidence, you're not gonna have any boundaries. And boundaries, toxic people don't like boundaries. They're like, ew, great. Wait, wait I'm gonna, I was, we need to repeat that. So if a person doesn't have self-confidence, they don't have any boundaries. Right. If, if they don't have any, so, so self-confidence is huge. When you meet someone like this, who's trying to find a way, you said, I like the way you said belittle you so they can control you. Yes. So that's their, that's their objective. But first they want to try to shower you with gifts to make you like get addicted to them or attention yeah. when you open. Okay. And um, also like oftentimes they will try and get you in bed super fast because then that, then that create, then that strengthens that bond a lot quicker. Yeah. A connection. Try to create a. They try to create a connection uh, through through sex or 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 or, or, or trying to be romantic as much as possible. Okay. Yeah. So that like strengthens that bond that much um, that much more and that much quicker. So there's love bombing. There is so there's three phases to a toxic relationship pattern. Is love bombing. Um, devaluation and discard. And what oftentimes will happen is it's called a pattern for a reason, right? So what will happen is usually it'll like go love bombing, devaluation, love bombing, devaluation. And then the reason, typically the reason that they end up discarding you and it, again, what typically happens is they'll discard you, like they'll let you go but then they'll try and come back and do the love bombing. And it's just, it's a pattern. It just keeps on going until you say enough is enough. I'm done. Well, what, what makes, what makes them want to keep coming back in your opinion? Um, the only reason why toxic individuals and I'm taught when I say toxic, I predominantly mean, individuals who typically have potentially have personality disorders like a narcissistic personality disorder or like psychopathic personality disorder and their only their only goal is to get is so that they can control you that's the only reason that you're in their life and the reason why is it's actually really it's really sad like typically from like all and I I pretty much have a PhD in all this stuff by now because I've done so much research. Wait, 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 but you weren't you weren't trying to go to get a PhD in this. It just happened, right? Yeah. I'm just asking. It just happened, yeah. right? You were Yeah. And so okay. no, I, I don't have a PhD, but I No, no, that's not what I meant. I mean you weren't trying to get a PhD. This these people just came into your life. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Got it. Yeah. And so, um, so w I'm sorry, I totally lost track of what I was saying. So the only reason, so the only reason that they, it's kind of a sad reason why they, they do this. Yeah. So see, and you think all men don't pay attention. No, I'm just 
my daddy told me to pay attention when a woman's talking. So I do what I'm told. That is right. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right. You Go ahead, you were saying. <laughs> so it's really sad. Um, typically what happens is the reason why they have this personality disorder is in their childhood, something traumatic happened, like very traumatic um, happens. And it's actually this personality disorder is a coping mechanism coping mechanism for the trauma, the extreme trauma they experienced in their childhood. So that's, that's, that, I mean, that's really sad, right? Um, no, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so their trauma, the, what they experienced that was in itself maybe toxic or dysfunctional. Uh, I would they, say very it, abusive. Say it again? I would say very abusive. Okay, abusive. Okay, so we go abuse. So they never had that addressed then. Is that what it is? They've never addressed it. It was never addressed. Right. Yeah. And at this point, when someone has what we call a cluster B personality disorder, which under that umbrella of cluster B personality disorders is um, narcissism, psychopath, sociopath, um, and borderline personality disorders. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, what happens is by the time they're like getting to their adulthood and they already have this personality disorder, these right. personality disorders are extremely difficult to treat because typically they won't even um, consider going to therapy even if they do, what typically happens is, and this is through, you know, what the education I've gotten reading lots of things and also hearing of people's experiences is, and this also happened to me, one of my toxic exes said when we were like in our, because we went on and off, when we were on our off and off stage, but we were still in contact. He was telling me, and I found out that he was lying later, but he was telling me that he was um, in therapy because I kind of, I, not kind of, I gave, him, I gave him an ultimatum and I said, hey, if these things, if your behavior keeps on continuing like this, um, I'm not going to be with you anymore. And so right, right. he said he was going to therapy, um, but he, like I said, yeah, I found out that later he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't. Yeah. But even if they do go to therapy, what will happen is they're so good at coercing people. And typically people who are like narcissistic or like psychopathic, typically they're very charming. So it's pretty easy for them to get like the therapist kind of like on their side. And they're super right. good at like playing the victim role. Hmm. And at some point, at some point when you were dealing with your ex that said he was going to therapy, was there a moment, by the way, none of this is scripted, so I say that over and over, so when people go like, oh, she knows what he's going to ask. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. I can see it in your, your eyes going like, I have no idea what that man's going to ask me. Uh, but I'm just curious, so when you're dealing with, with him and he tells you, you know, he's swearing or whatever saying hey you know i'm getting therapy and whatever was there a moment that you like wanted to believe it oh uh, you know? yeah I, so, so i'm just i'm just curious because i'm a guy so i'm just gonna say because i know how guys are yeah. so i'm just saying i'm just so do do you think he maybe just said that to kind of just play you on 100 uh, percent okay so it wasn't like he maybe really wanted to go get therapy well he wasn't anywhere in that you knew for a fact, I mean, you found out later for sure, but in the moment, you, like, wish that it was, like, true. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like, he, it's kind of like he's playing on that, though. I mean, that's why I'm trying to do this and have these. I'm going to have more of these where we have shows, hopefully, with you. We talk about this for women because women need to know, you know, they're just lying. <laughs> just, that's the best way I can say it. They're just lying yeah. because that's the pattern. That's their pattern, though, right? I mean, it sounds like that's the pattern. That they lie like all the time. Yeah, they'll do anything and they'll say anything to 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 keep you. Because to keep if they don't if they don't have you around, they have to have what's called 
narcissistic supply. Uh -huh. They don't have, if, it, if you're not their supply, then they're going to go find supply somewhere. So and oftentimes, like, these toxic individuals uh, out, aren't just, they're cheating. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. They're probably right. cheating because they just, they need this, like, constant um, input of supply so that mm -hmm. they can feel like they have, they control you because they need a sense of control in their lives. And if they control you, then they feel like everything is in control. And again, that's because of they had a past, the past. So, so, it, so they are not, they're not in a position to really self-regulate or, or be self-aware about themselves. They, they need to be able to control something outside of them, almost like a toy, almost, almost like a pet. Yeah. It's kind of like the, the person, the human, the, the woman is being treated like she's just a object, really. Exactly. And I would, I would say that it's not that they necessarily, they don't necessarily have um, like emotional regulation. So often um, okay. people with like narcissistic personality disorder and or psychopathic disorders they lack empathy. And so if, if they do, if they do show any empathy, it's not because they're actually feeling empathy for you. It's mm -hmm. that they've learned how to look like they're feeling empathy for you, but they actually so don't have the capacity to feel empathy. That's how they can, that's how they can treat people. That's how they can treat their targets. And I, I like to say targets and not victims because okay. I feel like victim, the word victim is very um, unempowering. It's not empowering. Right, right. I feel like victims are more like if you, if, people are in situations that they like really cannot get out of. Um, okay. so, so yeah, that's why I use the, the word target. And again, I forgot, I forgot what I was saying. I go like this and then I'm like, hey, oh, wait, we're supposed, we're supposed to be a team. So if you forget it, I remember it. If I forget, if you forget it and I forget it, then we pick something new. We just go with the flow. So, so, I'm just, so, so the target, since that's the case, then the target has to make a decision or I'm going to go to something you said, which I like what you said when you said you gave him an ultimatum. And from and from what I'm hearing from others, that kind of happens at some point that that the target says if they're not discarded. Somewhere down the line, there's an ultimatum that's given to the to toxic person or they know it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Or they know it's coming and then they want to run and then come back. But overall, they know that they're not measuring up or they're not good enough because they it's what. So were you treated one way at home and then one way in public from what I'm hearing others say that that's what happens to them? Were you treated one way in private and one way in public? Yes. So they're again, they're very oftentimes very charming individuals and they at least the the two people that I that I was um, dating, um, they they like they they know like they know that they're manipulating you. They actually they actually know that they know they so it's not like oh they're doing they're like saying belittling things they're like being disrespectful in like their behavior or what they're saying um right. they like they know that they're doing right. it. so so there, it's not like they don't have a conscience they're choosing to ignore the behavior they know they should be doing and instead they make a conscious decision to put another human being, put the woman down. Yeah. 
and then manipulate how everyone else on the outside sees it so that they be, look like they're the target or the victim. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay so, that's crazy. But, okay, I, but that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, my phone, my phone even agrees with me. That's, that's absolutely crazy. Yeah. So, like, they, these people would never, like, we wouldn't, like, be out around people when they would say, like, belittling or, like, be disrespectful. It was, Little dig. Right. It was, it was always when we were alone or, like, messaging or like talking on the phone just the two of us because there's no way that they would want anyone on the outside to think that they were anything less than amazing because it's crazy again because they're typically so charming the outside world sees them as amazing individuals because they act like that but they're really, they're really super broken and like damaged inside, actually.